This is a cycloidal gear set. It's a gear reduction mechanism that can produce massive torque. And while it may look simple, there's actually a lot of things that make it really interesting. I designed it and 3D modeled it using Fusion 360. There are four main components in a cycloidal gear set. First, we have the outside cycloidal rotor. It has nine cycloid shaped gear teeth. And inside of this goes the inside cycloidal rotor. This has eight cycloid shaped gear teeth. Because it's smaller and has one less tooth, you can see how it can kind of rotate inside of the other piece. The next piece is critical to making the entire mechanism work. This is the eccentric pin. The pin portion is centered in the entire mechanism and you can see the addition of a larger eccentric circle. This pin is basically the input axle and you can see how it helps align the center cycloidal gear. And a really good way to secure 3D printed parts together is by using simple C-clips. But how do we actually get the output out of this mechanism? Well, we could use this output carrier. The carrier has a pin on the underside that aligns it to the center of the entire mechanism, but we still don't have an output shaft. So let's go ahead and build a housing for the entire mechanism. So let's hop back into Fusion 360 and modify the output carrier to have an output shaft. I created four lines across these points and I could use the midpoint of these lines to find the exact center, but we still need some sort of brace to hold everything in place. I created a two dimensional sketch of the basic outline of the brace. It took quite a bit of tweaking, but I eventually got it so it just snaps right on. And I added some slots on top of the brace so that way you could see the workings of the mechanism. Now let's see the cycloidal drive in action. Now you can clearly see how the yellow output shaft is centered and slowly spinning. This setup is a gear reduction and the output rotation is opposite of the input. But there's something really cool about this specific setup. The orange outer rotor can freely spin inside the housing. What happens is if I hold the output shaft still and I spin the input, you'll see the output is now the orange outer rotor. So you can see there's multiple ways to make a cycloidal gear drive work. But why would someone use a cycloidal gear drive in the first place? And why not use just a regular planetary gear set? Cycloidal gear sets provide a very easy way to get very high gear reductions. This setup has an 8 to 1 gear ratio. Let's go ahead and add a mark to the output shaft and count the number of turns it takes for the output to spin one time. So here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, eight. But here's where it gets really cool and really interesting. Now, if we make the orange PC output by holding the yellow shaft, we now have a nine to one gear ratio. It's a little difficult to hold everything together, so I'm gonna weld this thing up. You can easily join three printed parts together by using a soldering iron. We're looking at the gear ratio between the white housing and the orange outer rotor. Now that everything is secure, let's go ahead and test the gear ratio. So here we go. Let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So a cycloidal gear set could have two gear ratios in one. Another cool thing about cycloidal drives is they can't be back driven. And here you can see a planetary gear set easily being back driven. Another benefit to cycloidal gear sets is that they have very little backlash. Also, because a cycloidal drive has so many different contact points, any load gets distributed along those points. So what makes this cycloidal drive so cool? They could pack a huge gear reduction into a tiny space. They have really good shock and load resistance and basically no backlash and really high precision.